In this video, we're going to show you how the Proposal Pack Wizard's multiple choice database feature works. This feature allows you to create pick lists of items that you can drop into your proposals at the document generation time, where those lists of items can be uh, complete Word documents, pictures, PDF files, spreadsheets, any kind of document type that Word can insert into a Word document. Some uses for this would be if you have a list of staff resumes, you want to be able to show your client one or more people they'd be working with, and you want to be able to dynamically create that in the document when you generate it, because you might have different lists of people for given clients. Uh, this can be used for packages of information where you want to select you know a list of packages for the customer to choose from options uh, lists of product information specifications sheets uh, your services anything that you have multiple items that you want to drop into a page now we have other features that will allow you to say have multiple templates say if you want to have more than one products page or one more than one services page and then select the entire page at assembly time this is a different feature where the multiple choice database is going to have a list of items you can pick one or more from and it will drop all of that content one after the other into a single spot like a single page so there's a couple things we need to do. We, you know, we need to identify the pages in the proposal that are gonna be used to drop content into. You know, This might be the products page or the services page or the staffing or resume page and so on. You know, the products options page. You know, just identify the templates or the chapters where content's gonna get dropped into. Then we have to create all that content and then link it up into the wizard's multiple choice database. Once the data's been set up, then we can generate documents using that data. To get more information, look at the proposal pack wizard manual, and you can just search, do you like control F search for the word multiple. And you'll find this chapter, how do I use multiple choice fields? So this will go into more depth, how to use the multiple choice database. Just find that chapter in the wizard manual. And you can get to the manual from your home screen view manual, and it should also be linked on your desktop. That'll be the documentation.pdf file in your wizard folder. We'll show one quick tip here on how to set up external files for use with the multiple choice database. Because if we're going to be creating a bunch of content to drop in, a lot of times that content is going to be held in Word documents. When you are combining multiple Word documents, you know, Word is going to have a set of rules that follows to assemble documents together and how it's going to apply document formatting, what formatting takes precedence over other formatting. So you have the possibility that formatting of your text can change when you drop in content. So we want to prevent that from happening. Uh, we've created a little test file here. It's just a plain Word document with no customizations to it other than we've typed in some text and it uses all the stock default word styles. So this is all in normal text. So what we wanna do is we wanna add all of the proposal pack custom word styles to our custom content to help ensure that we don't have formatting problems down the road. So what we're gonna do is, say you've been creating your content in documents that you're gonna to use to drop in later, a quick and easy way to add word styles that'll match the proposal pack styles is use the wizard, go into the preferences, click this tools tab, and click this batch process documents button. We'll browse to the folder that we keep our documents in. This is gonna be wherever you happen to be 
putting your custom content on your computer. And make sure you keep backup files of all your content before you start applying these things. So let's just select our temp2 folder. And all we're gonna do is add proposal kit defined word styles and start the batch. And it's just gonna go through every document we have in our custom folder. And it's gonna apply the same word styles that whatever proposal pack design theme you have it uses. Now we can open up this file again, and you see the text is all still the same. Nothing's been modified here. The only thing that's happened is the wizard's batch process has added all of the proposal kits, custom word styles. So what you should do is apply our proposal kit styles to the content that you're gonna be creating in your multiple choice uh, files. So for example, header text, we can use proposal kit subheader one or subheader two for a font, smaller font size. So subheader one, we'll select that. We're gonna set anything that was normal text to proposal kit body text. And we're gonna redo our bullet points. You can undo any custom formatting. So say clear formatting, start from scratch. And we'll just apply the proposal kit bullet list. So that all we've really done is we're just modifying our content to apply proposal kit word styles to the text. And this will help ensure that when this content gets dropped into your proposal by this multiple choice database feature that no formatting changes will occur because you'll be using the same exact word stylings as the wizards can be used, as the wizards going to be using. So that's just a quick tip to prevent future formatting issues using the multiple choice database. Okay, now to set up the multiple choice database, you're just gonna click the wizard's preferences button. Click the data and display tab and click the configure multiple choice button. Now we've created some content already ahead of time. We're gonna create three multiple choice lists. One is a list of just pictures, so you can see how you can use pictures as your content. And two lists of Word documents. You know, one list is gonna be a list of products, product information, and another will be a list of staff resumes. So in the end, we're gonna have three drop-down lists that our users can select when they're creating projects of drop-in content. So how do we set this all up in the Wizards database? Well, the multiple choice database feature is based on selecting a template the content will get dropped into, putting a tag into that template so the wizard knows where to drop the content into, and then setting up a list of content, which we call paragraphs. A paragraph can be any of these things, pictures, PDF files, documents, spreadsheets, so on, and attach a list of those to that tag. So our first list, we'll use the people tag. You know, these are just titles that we've given it to help you organize if you're gonna have, use different tags for different situations all in the same document. You know, if you, only have, if you only have one drop down list, you might only use one of these categories like the services or products or so on. So we'll select the people category. And each category has some tags predefined to go along with it. So we'll just pick the first tag on the list, multiple choice tag 21, and edit the tag. Now we want to force the user to always make a selection. So we're gonna check this box and we want to allow the user to select more than one from the data entry screen when they're creating projects. So we'll just check this box. And we're just gonna leave 
these labels and tags alone. Now we have to assign the tag to an actual template. Since we're using the resumes of staff, we're just gonna find the resume page. Now there's other pages this could go into. You could use the staff page, the key personnel page, so on, the officers and board page. Uh, we're just gonna pick the resume page. Okay, now that we have the resume page selected, we need to edit it. So we'll click the edit, select the template button. And we need to put this tag, multiple choice dash 21 into the template. And the wizard's gonna pop up a little message just reminding us what we need to type into this template. Multiple choice dash 21. We're gonna delete all the stock text out of this template. And we're just gonna type with our keyboard, multiple choice 21. This is just text I'm typing in with the keyboard. So we have our tag in here, we save it. Now the wizard knows where to drop in the content when it assembles everything. And also, since we're gonna allow multiple choices, we want to have a delimiter that goes between all of the drop-in content. You know, so you can have like no delimiter, a blind, paragraphs, custom breaks. We're gonna do a custom delimiter. And we'll show how this setup works. So if you're gonna use a custom delimiter, that's a delimiter you can define within a Word document that will get dropped in in between all of the drop-in content. And that delimiter, if you're going to use the custom delimiter, you have to edit this file in your proposal projects. And this version number will be the addition of the Word you have. Right now it's version 14. So find your proposal projects folder and that's usually in your C drive and the proposal kit folder, proposal pack folder, find the proposal projects folder, find the paragraph files folder. Once you find that folder, you'll find a file called default delimiter file. Open that and edit it. So we've already edited this. By default, it'll just be a black line. So we've just made a thinner line. We've put some blank space before and after it. And we've set the color to kind of match our software to design theme. And you can see what we did is we added 0.5 inches top and bottom to give some white space between the selections. So you can define your own custom delimiter in a Word document. So you can use anything. You can put pictures, shapes, you know, paragraph, line breaks, anything you want in here. Okay, so, all right, so that's how you define a custom delimiter. Now that we have the tag set up and attached to a specific template, we need to add all the data, so these three resume files. So we call them paragraphs. A paragraph is just a block of content attached to a tag. That paragraph can be a Word document, a picture, a PDF file, a spreadsheet, and so on. So now that we have our tag selected, we just say add paragraph to tag. I have two options here. We're doing this in the way that we've pre-created all the documents and content in our little temp folder here. If you want the wizard to create a blank document for you to start editing from scratch to drop your content into, you can use this open or edit button and the wizard will create this file for you. Or you can skip this and just browse straight to an existing file. So we are going to browse to our resume one. You can see here, we've 
put in a picture, we have text. So I'm gonna give a title that matches what's in that actual document. So that's just my name. And that's all there is to it. You just give it a title, link to a document. Uh, that's just gonna be a static dropped in document. Uh, we do support the linking of files. So OLE links are good if you want to have your external content be able to be edited and then have the Word documents it's inserted into auto update. So this is good for spreadsheets, for example, or PDF documents that might change where you don't want to have to reinsert that content later if it, it gets updated. We're just gonna do static links for now. And you can see these options here that are grayed out. Uh, these are for pictures, and we'll show that later because they're grayed out now because we're inserting a document. And that's all there's to it. So we'll just add a few more paragraphs. So uh, resume two, that's for Tom. Resume three, that's for Jennifer. So we're just gonna add these files. Now these titles I'm giving this, this is just for our information. These are going to be what shows up in the drop-down lists at document assembly time when you're picking your drop-in content. So give these titles that you're gonna recognize later. Okay, so we've got the three resumes done. Now let's go to the products category and we'll just select the first tag for that, edit that. And again, we'll check these boxes. We'll select our same custom delimiter. And since this is a list of products pages, we're gonna go down and find the products template. Now we'll edit the products template and we have to put in the multiple choice dash 11 tag this time because we're select the tag we've selected. And we're going to delete our stock content. And we've added just using text and our keyboard, multiple choice dash 11. And I have the screen up here so I can double check. Yep, multiple choice 11, that's correct. Now we can add these four product pages as the paragraphs. So I'm just gonna open these up as I go. So propose to get professional, that's our first title. Products one. You can see if you've got your content created, it's pretty quick to add these paragraphs. Okay, so I've got all the products added. Now our third list is gonna be a list of pictures. And we'll show how the custom categories work. So we're just gonna edit the categories. We'll just change custom one to be photos. And I'll just again pick the first tag on the list.
and we're going to use the options chapter. So for example, we might be showing a customer a list of possible graphic design theme options for a website or something. You know, this is this could be anything. This could be options for, you know, insurance packages. It could be options for heavy equipment. It could be options for heavy equipment parts. You know, anything you want. Now we'll edit this template. Now we have to put in this tag multiple choice dash 41. So once again, we'll delete the boilerplate content. And we're going to put multiple choice dash 41 as our tag. And we're going to drop in these five pictures as our paragraphs. And I'm just going to title these based on the names of the pictures. The design theme is in the pictures. And you'll see the wizard sees that we are importing a graphic. So you have the option of changing the wrapping, the scaling factor, horizontal, horizontal vertical position, and so on. Okay, so now we have three multiple choice drop down lists created. We've edited the stock templates to put in tags so the wizard knows where to drop in the content. And we are ready to start generating documents. One last thing we can do is we can run a quick test by clicking this button here. This will cause the wizard to run through a, a quick test operation and it's going to just double check all of our settings, uh, make sure there aren't any missing files or anything wasn't incorrectly set up. So you can kind of look through this report and everything's fine. It's just telling us what all has uh, been created. It actually does a little test, dropping in the content with our custom delimiter. So you can see what it will look like if all options were dropped in. So you can see how it just put a delimiter in between everything. All looks good. So now we'll get out of the preferences and now we're ready to start generating actual documents. So we're going to create a project. And you'll note that the wizard already pre-selected three templates. Because we set up the multiple choice database with the options checked that tell the wizard that the user must make a selection, the, the wizard knows what templates we have set up for the multiple choice database. So it kind of automatically selects those for us just to speed things up. So we don't have to go and select the options resume and products page. It's already been created for us. So we'll add a few more pages, cover letter, title page, back page, maybe an executive summary, and a cost summary. And let's move the products page up a little bit. And now we are ready to set up the rest of the data. So our company data, that's just whatever you have filled in when you set up the wizard and then client data and the multiple choice. You'll see how the gold arrow is pointing to the multiple choice 
button because the wizard knows we have to make selections. And you'll see that the three multiple choice categories that we set up data for are all showing up as tabs here. And there's an X in front of each of these, meaning we haven't made a selection and we have to make a selection. So the wizard actually won't let us generate the document until we make selections here because we set up the database to force it to make one or more selections. So we're going to select, uh, say, the Pro Kit, Estimate, and Project Management. For people, we'll select Ian and Jennifer. And for photos, let's select Software 1, Software 2, Tech 9. Now we have all the multiple choice drop down data selected. And now we can actually generate a document. Okay, so we've generated our document. We'll take a look at this, see how it looks. You can see the client data, company data was merged in using our software to design theme. More company and client data merged in there. Our stock executive summary, cost summary. Uh, now just an FYI, the cost summaries, this is just a static version in our example here, but this can be linked into an Excel spreadsheet or you can use it along with uh, third party quoting software, so on to automate your line item calculations. And we get to the products page. So you can see right here is where the original tag was in the original template. So this is the starting point for where the drop-in content gets put in. So you can see it dropped in the first piece of content, put in the custom delimiter, dropped in the second piece of content, custom delimiter, and dropped in the third piece of content. And we get to the options page. Same thing, it drops in the first piece of content, custom delimiter, second piece of content, custom delimiter, third piece of content. And we get down to the resume page. Again, this is where the tag was. So it dropped in the first piece of content, custom delimiter, second piece of content. And it's finished off with the back cover page. And again, this is data that's merged in from your company data. So that is how you set up the multiple choice database to create drop down pick lists of content to drop into your documents at document assembly time. Let us know what you think in the comments below and click subscribe to keep up on the latest proposal writing tips with Proposal Kit.